You know, Iris, if that is the way you want to try to drink water out of that water trough, that is your choice, but I have to say it is a little bit odd. However, I am glad that you are feeling better, and she is indeed feeling better, you guys. So welcome back to our jungle zoo here in Zoo Tycoon 2, and we're here with the pandas. Look at how cute they are. Iris, you're adorable. Oh, are you barking for your baby? Whoa, where'd you go? There you are. Are you barking for your baby? Ooh, and Pearl is now pregnant. Oh my goodness, which one's Pearl? Oh, Pearl's one of our orangutans. Oh my gosh, look at all the orangutans. Are they eating their bananas? It is so cool to watch them. Oh my gosh, they are just digging those berries. Look at you guys. Are you enjoying your grapes today? Are you enjoying your grapes today, sir? All right, let's go through. Oh, and I see. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I'm like, look at you eat your banana as I kick your treat ball away from you so you can't get any more bananas out of it. Oh, my goodness gracious. But yes, we are back. And I actually, because I was so worried about how weird the pandas were doing, the reason it took so long is that I tossed the save file over to Ben so that he could take a look at it, make sure everything's doing all right. And sure enough, as soon as he got the save file, all of the. Oh, there's one of those cranes. Okay, got to grab that crane. All right, and we're adopting out these cranes because they actually attack the pandas, we found out. So, yeah, all of the pandas are doing fine. They were all eating fine for Ben. So maybe they were just having kind of a quirky, weird day. So we're trying to take good care of them. So they are all doing okay now. We have a lot of pandas. Hi, little baby. Hi, maybe you're not a baby. Actually, I think you're one of the adults. Oh my gosh, look, somebody. Oh, it's Orchid. Okay, she's going to go eat some bamboo from the trough. I feel like she needs... Do you guys need, like... A tire? Is it because your ball managed to roll into the lake? Do you need your pursuit ball? Is that a thing? Um, let's see. Toys for pandas, huh? We're trying to going to investigate the tar tire. <gasps> come here, come here, orchid, come here. If you want, if you want to play with the car tire, this is perfect. I won't kick this one away. I'm gonna stand very still right here. You can come on over. Come on. All right, you're sniffing it. Come on. Oh my gosh. You can lead a panda to, like, bamboo. Oh, great. And that's wonderful. That's fine, Giant Panda 10. Just leave a giant pile of poop right there. At least I can sell it for, like, exorbitant amounts. Because I'm sure that some, like, hip gardener would love to be able to say that they fertilized their bamboo with panda poop or something like that. All right. What's going on over here? Going to go play with the pursuit ball. So Panda 10 is really excited about this. Is Orchid feeling better? Orchid, do you need like different kinds of toys? I mean, here's a small ball. What about, what about like a little squeaky toy, a rubber toy? Yeah? Maybe a ball with a rattle? Oh my gosh, she's like running for it. Orchid, where are you going? Are, oh, is there a pursuit ball over here? <gasps> I think she just played with this pursuit ball. Yay, Orchid! And that has slowly started to help her out with her enrichment need that she needed. So I think Orchid's gonna be just fine. She's just a little bit of a fussy panda. She doesn't know what she wants some days. And what are you what are you doing, Pando? Iris. Oh, it's Iris! Oh, she's waiting to nurse her baby. Where is her baby? Our child is. Oh, he's working his way over to her. Alright, it should be fine. Is that you again, Orchid? No, it's just a very excited panda who's just like pushing Orchid as, or in, uh, Iris aside to play with the pursuit ball. So they seem pretty happy now. Alright, pandas are content. Oh, Clouded Leopard 8 is gonna give birth. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious, that means we need to go ahead and we're going to adopt out her two children that she currently has so that there's enough room for her new baby to be nice and safe. Alright, because that's, that's how it would really go in the wild with most big cat families. Whoops, there's some poop to scoop over here. You wouldn't have... Oh, sorry about the lag. I have no idea what that's up with all of a sudden. But you wouldn't end up having like all of these big cats smooshed together. They would all have their own little areas. So is she going to have her babies? They're just going to look like little white kittens. Does this need filled? We'll add more flesh to the... Oh, here she goes. Oh, clouded leopard babies. Like I said, they're just going to look like little white kittens right now because of the way that they're coated. So they don't look correct. But that's okay because they're still like going to grow up into beautiful clouded leopards. So that's going to be amazing. Oh, and Panther Chameleon 11 has just laid an egg for us. Huzzah! That's so exciting. <gasps> look at the little egg, you guys. Oh, there's so much going on in our zoo as usual. Look at the tiny little egg. It's just hiding right in here. Oh, that's so much fun. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, and actually opening up the camera reminds me, we need to take care of this challenge. I think we've had this challenge for like over a year now, so we definitely need to tend to that. But before we jump into that, I do want to come over and I will show you guys how our palm cockatoos are doing. And we should get down at least a few other 
you know, a few other um, birds into this exhibit because this is a pretty empty exhibit right now. How you doing, ma'am? Are you enjoying walking around here? I want to eat at the restaurant. I needed money but couldn't find an ATM. Oh no, and she's trying to go to a restaurant like right now to eat. Oh my gosh, if we don't keep her fed, like she might get turned away from the door. That might be a thing that happens, I'm not sure. And then her hunger will go up and then she'll get cranky and she'll storm out of our zoo. When all she wants to do is throw more money at us, so we definitely need to fix this. Let's go ahead and we will get some ferns put down. Along here, I'm gonna fill this in. Let's see, yeah, more ferns over here. Um, these chameleon trees make really nice decorative pieces. I really, really like them. And we'll go ahead and put down some stargazer lilies over here. Uh, maybe a couple more. Man, they're kind of like hard on the eyes a little bit in the weirdest ways. Um, and then maybe like the potted plants perhaps? No, we need, we need this little jungle palm. There we go. Oh, that's much better. Use the large, like, big giant plants to kind of break all of the beautiful little stargazer lilies up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to come in here. Let's go ahead and grab our little path through the ATM and be like, come this way! Give us your money, friends! I wonder, we need to put, like, some sort of little statue. Well, they have a fountain right there, but it really would be fun if I could put, like, the, the archway over. Can I put the archway over the ATM? Because they're not going to have to go through the archway. And I almost feel like that would be a really fun way of like them getting their entertainment going up while they're like getting their money. So is that that lady? Hang on, lady. You're gonna be able to get money now. Um, let's see. Dang it. All right, I need, not these, I need the arches, not the over, the little over canopies. All right, where's my arches? Oh, here they are. All right, so let's see which arch, which arch, which arch am I using in this zoo? I can't remember. Am I even using an arch in this zoo? I sure am. It just looks like plants, so I feel like it's plants. All right, there we go. Oh, that's so cool. I hadn't thought about that before, but now maybe if they get near it, they can like have their fun go up. Is she going to get turned out of my restaurant or is she just going to go in there and eat my free bread, like free breadsticks or something? All right, she's in the restaurant. She wants to eat at the restaurant. She doesn't have any money. How is she eating here? Is, are we really just like letting her eat for free? Well, I'm not going to turn away somebody who's like hungry, but... You know, maybe I need to put some more ATMs in. All right, and our red pandas are getting sick really often. So redoing the red panda exhibit is definitely one of the goals that we've been having. But let's go ahead, come in, try to make sure everybody is groomed. Peony, let's see. Maybe there's too many of you guys? Is that the problem? Are you guys doing okay? All right, yeah, your food and everything is all topped off. Why are you angry, sir? Red Panda 31 looks really sick. And then Red Panda 31 looks pretty happy. Well, what do you know? What do you know, buddy? He's got a lot of money. Uh, he's being entertained by the educator, so that's always a plus. Always a good thing. We want these discovery kiosks absolutely everywhere. Because, let's see, where are my little... Where's my little list of challenges? The goals... Well, that's that one. I mean, I mean, I need my little list. Yeah, this thing. This thing. And actually, oh, I think Ben told me that while he was trying to check if our zoo needed fixing. He, yes, the entertainment donation award. The face painting kiosk is now available. Huzzah, you guys. That's going to be so much fun. And we're slowly pecking our way up with the educational donation award. So we'll keep working on that. All right. And one of the wild horses is now pregnant, which is absolutely awesome. I'm going to look for... Where's a really popular area? Where's somewhere we've got a lot of people converging on the zoo right now? Where is... We don't really seem to have many people here right now, actually. All right, there's a ton of people over at the reptile house as usual. So I think what I want to do... If... I hope they're not all leaving. Are you guys all leaving my zoo? Oh my gosh! Some of them are... Oh, they're so angry and they're all leaving my zoo. No. What? And Palm Cockatoo 1 is sick. What? What? You're just sick, but all your needs are fine. Okay, well, let's go over. We're going to take care. Oh, look at her. She is on this. She is healing up the palm cockatoo. We don't even have to get involved. She's taking out the medicine. Look at her healing touch onto our beautiful bird. Oh, look at him. He's like so upset because the bird is sick. He should be okay. Yeah, he's been healed now. He's okay now, sir. Are you still upset? Oh, dear. Well, yeah, he likes the panther chameleons at least, so that's a good thing. All right, well, let's see. I want to find the face painting kiosk really quickly and just 
Maybe put it at the entrance of our zoo because that's like a really fun thing for kids. We'll put down a couple of them because I love that face painting kiosk and it it's, takes a while to like unlock per zoo. So we'll go ahead and put that down if I can find it, if I can find it. And here it is. Yay, I'm so excited. We'll put a little face painting kiosk over here. And I just love seeing everybody walk around with like all of the, the little things. Why is there a crate right here? What is going on? There's another escape Samachian and striped rabbit. That's what's going on. Well, we'll just casually tuck it back in like nothing happened. These endangered, possibly extinct species of rabbits escaping everywhere. It's totally fine. It's totally fine, you guys. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, we'll put a face pink kiosk over here. Um, I just, I really love watching, especially the kids, all walk around with these face painting kiosks, like the face paint on their faces. So I'm just going to kind of, I don't want to stick them in obnoxious places, but I do want them kind of all over the place so people will come and like get their faces painted. So we'll see how that does. All right, so that's done. And we'll let people go and get their faces painted and get super excited when we see people walking around with little tiger masks on. But for now, let's go ahead and dig through. We're gonna add in, um, let's see. Oh, and then by the way, I think I forgot to show it to you guys, but look what Ben built for us. So this is an extra exhibit that he built that we can kind of plan however we want to. So we're gonna need to take suggestions. I think it's definitely gonna be a multi-species exhibit. It is a absolutely beautiful waterfall and pond. It is lined just masterfully. Like he does such an amazing job with building his exhibits. He's so good at it. He's really, well, like that's his, his name has been Zoo Master. He's really a master at building these zoos and I love it. And he has even put in like some arowana. You can see the arowana swimming around here. And I can't remember what the other fish is, but it's really cute. And he's put down some of these big trees. So what we can do is we can consider making this entire area into some sort of really big exhibit for some different animals. So we might do a multi-species exhibit over here pretty soon. So I'm super excited about that too. It looks absolutely gorgeous over there. All right, and what on earth? What on earth? What, what? What? Carcass of palm cockatoo. What? You guys! You're killing each other off. Is are you are you like fighting now? Are you happy? What what are they doing? Why are they fighting so much? Going to use the killie tree. It's a female. I knew these guys were trouble. I'm glad that they're like quarantined now. I miss that they had slaughtered another one of their own kind. Alright, let's see. Hmm. Which birds to pick? So that we can add them into our zoo. Which birds? Which birds? There's so many of them. Some of them are kind of broken in their coating. Some of them aren't. Many of them are just absolutely beautiful. I wonder which ones actually come. Like, are there any birds that actually come with just like the endangered, like just like here? Um, any birds that just qualify as endangered? There's the hoppy. There's the little kagu. I think the kagu would be okay in here. I definitely want some Scarlet Ibis if we have some of those kicking around somewhere. One day we'll have a platypus in one of our zones for sure. The Takahi is beautiful, so it'll probably be put in here. Oh, Oliver just died of old age. Goodbye, Oliver. The European Wildcat is so cute. Um, critically endangered. Any critically endangered birds? This guy we have in one of our zones, in our forest zoo actually, and it will eat absolutely everything, including each other, especially the babies of its own kind. So he's not going in here. The northern bald ibis is a very, very rare bird, but I think it would need something a little bit different from the more tropical biome we're going to be building. And the Spix we put the Spix we put some Spix's macaws in here. Super, super rare. We've talked about them quite a lot recently, actually, in our um, zoo crafting series. So let's go ahead and put some of these guys in here. Make sure that they're going to be super happy, that they're going to have everything they need. I don't think these shelters actually work. I really don't think these things actually work, but I'm gonna put down a couple of them just in case. The killie trees seem to work much better, to be completely honest, than anything else that we've tried um, that actually, like, they suggest for you to give to them up here. All right, we're gonna put down some fruit for these guys, kind of in obvious places. Um, let's put a hollow log with berries down, maybe back here. And we're gonna need to put some water dishes down, because these birds are not the smartest. And if you try to put down things other than a water dish, the birds often don't recognize it. Like they are in real life. I'm talking about the way the game has coded them. 
or the people who made the the coding for the game coded them. All right, let's actually spread the food out a little bit. We want these guys to have to forge around for their food because that's very healthy behavior for them to have to like look and try to find where their their food is hiding in the exhibit. So we'll kind of hide the food around the place and let us start decorating. So banana trees, I think they will actually interact with banana trees. I know the Kili trees are a really good choice for all of the animals, it seems, for all the birds at least. So we'll definitely put lots of these in here because I've seen the cockatoos interact with this. All right. And then, oh, the little tiny banana tree is so tiny. I didn't realize how small it was. Oh, this is so pretty. All right, that's probably plenty enough Kili trees. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a Kili tree too. What? Oh no, that's the same one, I think. And that's a Kapok tree. And then Madagascar giant bamboo. And there's tree ferns. We could put down some tree ferns. Maybe a couple in the back. I think now it's mostly going to be um, put that there. I think we're probably going to switch over to like mostly the ground cover items again. Alright, it's kind of hard when you're like just trying to put stuff down and you're like, I can't see where I'm going between like the aviary thing and then the tall trees. Alright, we'll line this up against the back maybe. So it'll kind of create a bit of a backdrop. For the birds, there we go. Let's turn. Yay! Oh, I can't wait to have the Spix Macaw like flying around here. Gertrude is going to give birth soon. Oh my goodness! What? She's already having another one. Gertrude, do you guys remember who Gertrude is? Artapir! Is she really gonna have another little spotty speckly baby? Oh my gosh, Gertrude! I didn't know you were expecting. This is so exciting! She has just given birth. Oh, is this the new baby? It's the new baby. She's got another little speckly. Oh my gosh, and we're gonna name this one Spotty. So Speckle is its sibling, and here's Spotty, the new baby. Absolutely adorable little things. It has uh, Speckle, yeah, look, Speckle's already grown up. Turned into a big, big, fat Speckle. Oh, I'm so proud, so proud. An Asian Elephant 8 is about to give birth to. Let us spend a little bit of time with her. This is her second child. She might be a painter. There's clearly some artwork that's been done by our Asian elephants over here. Let's just settle in. Try to respectfully uh, keep her some company while she is giving birth to another new elephant calf. Our Asian elephant population is absolutely booming and exploding. It's been pretty amazing, actually. All right. Oh, there's the baby! Hello, little baby! Whoops! That was me! Hello, little baby! Oh, that's so exciting. Welcome to the family. That guy got an up-close-and-personal view. I really hope he's like, wow, Asian Elephant 8 just had a baby. It's so cute. I mean, he's looking. Oh, look at everybody come greet the new baby! Oh, everybody in the herd just came to greet him. That is so cool. But yeah, this guy, he just got a really up-close view because he was using the binoculars while the elephant was giving birth. So, you probably had quite the view, sir. Bluegrass Guppy, um, we probably need to put some music rocks up along here because he's not feeling very entertained. Also, Panther Chameleon 13, now that you have a sibling, you can probably be adopted out. Speckle wants to reproduce, but can't find a mate. Oh my goodness. You guys, I think we're going to expand the Tapir exhibit next time too. But let's finish up with the Spix Macaw exhibit really quickly. And the next time it's going to be really, really fun to keep looking around and seeing how many people might start walking around with our new masks, like with the, or the face paintings that they can have. So that's gonna be very exciting. All right, we can start with these maybe. What are some good, um, lean storage. This is, this is pretty good. All right, maybe I'll start putting down some of the macaws and just kind of deal with this part of the landscaping as time goes on. I kind of prefer those ferns. I'm being finicky. I'm just being finicky because I love making the plant part of it look really good. And I love hiding like where the food is kind of tucked away, doing things like that, putting down pretty flowers. You guys know me by now. <laughs> you know I just get finicky with this kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead now that the food and water and everything is down and we will add in the Spix Macaws. I think I'm going to pull out... No, just these flowers, just these flowers. Well, let's go ahead and add in, we'll do two females, three females, two females, two males, because they do bond. And two males. 
And there you go, you guys. Hi, welcome to the family. You're the first ones in here. I apologize that it's still not quite finished. I am working on adding in the delicate touches of like the perfect ferns and everything in the back corners, like the way that we can maybe have some ferns back there. I'm sure they don't care. They're probably just like, is that more stuff to tear up? Because that is what, in my personal experience, these kinds of birds love to do is just to like rip things up because that's just, that's the nature of being a bird. It's just what birds do. Rip things apart with their big giant beaks. If you had a big giant beak, you probably would rip stuff apart too, I bet. I probably would too. All right, especially if it was plants. It would be so much fun. It would be like, whoa, look at me. I can tear this plant totally apart. All right, let's see. Maybe very carefully with a smaller, couple smaller little palm things going down here. Um, Maybe I, ooh, this is a nice big, big fern. Where are you guys going? The Spix Macaws are behind you. You need to check them out a little bit more. See how cool they are. All right, maybe put these over here. Look at them, they're just like strutting around, being cool birds. All right, see when we can cover up where they're getting their little drink from. And then come over here, we can put this down. And then we can come back and be like, I'm gonna cover that whole area in beautiful <gasps> mushrooms. I was gonna say flowers, but a few mushrooms here and there are definitely required for such an area. So I like these flowers, so I'm gonna put these flowers down in a few places. And yeah, I like this little guy too. So we might put him down in a few places too. So we'll figure it out. There's still, I've clearly gotta do, ooh, these delicate little, little ferny looking things, I like them. Clearly a lot more work to do. And I think as we add in more birds, then I'll continue to like come back to this area and work on it a little bit more so that we can make sure that we have something that appeals to all the birds, maybe helps them blend in a little bit. These people seem super happy. What are you guys even doing? Are you really viewing animals? Your educator, Ruth, is very educational. Well, I'm okay, and they're, they're watching the European graylings. Of course, it's fish. Who cares? Who cares that there's like super rare, almost extinct species of macaw right here where they could be looking at them when there's fish to look at because the fish are coded to have like ridiculously high attraction value. <laughs> so that's why they're ignoring my macaws, you guys. That's why. It's, it's not the macaws fault. They're, they know they're cool. Are you coming over to get a little snack? Yeah, he's, I think he's coming up. No, he's, he's going to go off somewhere to go poop. Not quite as elegant. I was really, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to like, you know, cheer people on for you and, and well, you, you be you, bird. You be you. If you want to poop around the place and that's how you're going to show off how awesome you are, that is 100% A-OK -okay your choice. Where is another one of these birds? Because I need to get some pictures of them being adorable. Hi guys, look at you. Oh my gosh, look how pretty they are. I almost need some lights in here though. Oh my goodness, it's kind of hard to see. There's another sp Yay! See, that's more in the spirit of things. Now she's coming over and she's checking out what the Spix Macaws are up to. That makes me happy. I need to change the area up back here. Are you sleeping? Are you okay? I'm assuming he's just, he's just a snoozy bird. Yeah, yep, just a snoozy bird. He's really pretty. All right, I need to put down some more ferns back there though because it's kind of creepy to just like have the, the empty ground to stare at. I can't see what I'm doing. I can't believe it, but the, the, the killie trees are actually in my way. <laughs> killie trees, I am trying to do art here with plants and you're in my way and you're kind of messing up my jam. Oh well, well, like I said, I'll continue to kind of peck away at this area as time goes on because I think people are pretty happy right now. Yeah, people are really happy, yay! And the macaws are calling to each other, so that always bodes well. Maybe they'll have a bazillion babies, and we will save a ton of money because we will be able to have the babies breed and send the babies to other zoos, and that is always fantastic for us. Oh, are you gonna go fly? Look at you! Oh, an Asian elephant too just gave birth. So there we go. All right, you guys. Well, we've still got more work to do in Zoo Tycoon 2, clearly. But people are starting to enjoy themselves. The, yep, the palm cockatoo. It was, it was like putting a bunch of fighting insects in a jar together, apparently. And the palm cockatoo slaughtered its only other occupant. So we'll just leave the vicious palm cockatoo on its own in the corner here. The Spix macaws, however, if I recall, don't have that issue. So they should be fine. 
Um, but they're running from each other, so we'll see. We might have a little bit of, um, like, battle in the bird aviary, so we'll have to check that out. But we'll take care of these guys next time. We will continue to try to get the educational awards. We'll actually finish that challenge. We'll go look at the tiny baby panther chameleon, and we will be doing so much more next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.